Okay. So we are now recording, and let's move this out of the way. I don't know. Okay, there we go. Okay, so here we go. Today, I'm actually kind of teaching things a little bit different than in the past, and so that's why I'm making a new recording this year um, because I kind of like the way I at changed it up this year, and so we're going to go with that. Um, yesterday, we finished up talking about Ileana's grade, and I think also yesterday we worked on the um, – first quiz and the second quiz of that person. Do you remember when we said, which, how did this person do better? Or which quiz did this person do better on? So I think that's where we had left off. And we ultimately determined that the person did better on the second quiz. And why was it that they did better on the second quiz? Why did we know they did better relative to their peers on the second quiz? What gave us that indication? It was more standard deviations above the mean. And remember that that was one of the key definitions that was critical. We learned that that Z-score, which you have got to know deep in your bones, that the Z-score is that number of standard deviations above or below the mean. All right. So what we're going to do today is just kind of refresh our memory on that first. So I want you to find in your notes, I think on page five, this slide that has talks about this married couple. And we're talking about being employed uh, by the same company, but um, the husband and the wife earn different amounts of money hourly. And so what we're interested in is saying, well, relative to their departments. So, yes, we see that the wife earns more. She earns $15.75 an hour and he earns $14.60 an hour. But let's see relative to his or her peers, how in their respective department, who is higher up in the department. So I want you to review that and uh, come up with what you got on that. So try that now. <clears throat> So I'm just writing down the facts from the paragraph for the mean and standard deviation of the husband and the wife. <clears throat> and then the X is your context data. So the context, the, what the husband is currently doing is $14.60 an hour. And what the wife currently earns is $15.75. So if they are on different salary schedules, how can I compare them? Yes, I can standardize the scores and get a standardized score that's called a Z-score. And we put it relative to the mean and the standard deviation. So that's what we did yesterday. We did our X minus the mean over the standard deviation, X minus the mean over the standard deviation. And so if you do that computing for the husband, then what is your Z-score? 1.5. So he um, is making one and a half standard deviations above his coworkers in his department. And so that's the relative location of the husband. The wife, X minus the mean over the standard deviation, X minus the mean over the standard deviation. So the wife, relative to her peers, is 1.25 standard deviations above the mean. So while the wife earns more, who is higher up in his or her respective departments? Yeah, the wife's at 1.25 and the husband's at 1.5. So the husband is higher up in his or her respective department. Okay. 
because that z-score standardizes it and levels the playing field so we're doing everything correctly comparatively very good now the next thing that we're interested in doing today is we want to know something such as this. We're actually going to skip a few um, slides over um, to where you find the slide that has this table of values. So I don't think, yeah, find the notes that goes over to page like nine or ten, nine or so, and it's this table of values. And for the first year ever, I'm actually going to not go into this table of values right now. And I'm just going to kind of jump right into how to compute these areas in your calculator. Um, and so I've debated on whether or not to do that or not. I think I might come back and show you this table. Um, but primarily uh, because we, we have to do the z-scores and we have to use the tables eventually with other things that we have to on some things so I'll come back to it but we're gonna dive right into doing it in our calculator calculator can a lot of times be more exact than just then this uh, table of values all right so let's take a look at what we're going for so this question that you have on this slide says what percentile is the husband located in in his department so my first question is what is percentile meaning what's it asking if it wants to know what percentile you're in yes very good so he is located at a z-score of 1.5 and you know if you're in the 90th percentile then you you know for height then you're taller than 90 percent of your like aged peers okay so the percentile is going to be that area below and we talked about that yesterday so i want to know this is what i'm interested in how much what proportion of his department <clears throat> what area is below his z-score of 1.5 and so that's what we're going to learn how to do today is compute that <clears throat> and other type areas. And so one of the things we're going to talk about and kind of summarize things with is our little thinking map that you picked up over there. And so let's take a look at that and fill in some, some information. So, of course, this normal model I told you yesterday is so foundational because the College Board wants us to know that if we have this, that given an area under the graph of the normal distribution okay so given this kind of information given this area or region for the normal distribution curve that we can use technology and they do also mention using a um, the table to calculate and estimate different parameters for the population so parameters meaning like their proportion or your means or your whatever's that we are estimating <clears throat> so we're going to start talking about what this area under the curve is doing for us so what do we remember about the area under the curve how much how much area is under that curve 100 percent the area under the curve the normal model curve is 100 percent of the data Okay, so that is 100% of all of our data. And so let's say we're talking about the husband's uh, coworkers. Okay, so that normal curve represents his whole entire department, 100% of his department. So let's talk about some other words I could use to describe that. I could say, what percent of his department is below him or above him what percent of data is below him above him in between two numbers I can do that and since I'm asking percentile that's implying what the area below good <clears throat> what if I said this how likely is it that you, if you're in his department you make less than him what am I kind of asking for there how likely is it that you make less than him? That is asking kind of for a what? Not how likely, a proportion. You, I mean, it, that works too. But a lot of times when we say how likely something is, a lot of times we're going for what's the 
probability of it happening? How likely is it? What is its probability? So what's the probability that you make less than him? The probability. But you guys were already mentioning the other thing. What proportion of his department makes less than him? So that's the other main thing that we reference. What proportion of observations, what proportion of the data falls below him in salary in his department. Okay, so those are, those are the things that this area is indicating to us, and that's really important that we understand what's going on there. So <clears throat> besides just describing for you what the normal model does for you, we're also going to talk about how do you compute those things using our calculator. So we're going to use this feature in our calculator called norm CDF, and that C stands for cumulative. Because you know how, for example, our first question we're asking is what proportion of the department is below him? Let me draw a picture. Then we're wanting to get this lower area. What proportion of the department is below him? So we're going to teach you how to compute that lower area. So I'm, we're going to kind of demonstrate it with our normal model. Our, uh, the husband had that z-score of 1.5, and we want to know, we are interested in what proportion of the department has a salary below him. So that's going, that's 1.5 all the way down to negative infinity, all the way down to forever, which I guess make, is zero, technically. Okay, so we want to calculate that area. Do you remember yesterday, what real skills would you need to know to be able to compute the area under a curve? Calculus. But we're not going to do that, so we're going to let our calculator compute it, that cumulative area for us. It's going to like do all these infinitely small slices of area and total all of those things up, and that's what integrating in calculus is going to do for us. So we're going to calculate in our calculator from negative infinity up to 1.5. So we'll use this feature, norm CDF, and we always write, we always go from least to greatest when we do that, and we're going to be going from negative infinity up to our z-score since we want that lower area. Okay? So I'm going to show you how to do that now in your calculator. And so if, do any of you have an inspire and inspire. Okay, so if you have inspire, uh, you're go yours is going to be similar to us, but what you're going to do is go menu, statistics, distributions. That'll get you where we're about to be. Menu, statistics, distributions. Okay, the rest of us, let's go in our calculator, and we want to be in distributions. Did you find that? Menu, statistics, distribution. Okay, we want to find distributions. Do you see distributions anywhere on here? I see D-I-S-T-R. That is your distributions. So we're going to go second vars so that you get to the distributions. And the distribution we're talking about are these normal ones, which is up here at the top. We will never, ever do normal PDF. We want the normal CDF because what does the C stand for? Cumulative, and we're accumulating that area. So we're going to go normal CDF. Now, some of you have an older operating system, and actually I prefer this, not just because I'm old, but because it actually is quicker and easier if you know the system, uh, where yours just comes up like that. Some of you have something different. Yours comes up with a menu that looks like this. Well, hold on. So not that. Um, let's see. Second vars, number two. Okay, yeah. The rest of you have got this. Okay, so I'll take us through this and then I'll show the other people who have the old operating system what to do. So it's first asking you for what your lower bound is. And so yours might say negative 1 to the e to the 99, and that's fine. You can do that as well. But we're going to simulate negative infinity with negative 99 because you know what that is? That 99 is 99 standard deviations below the mean. How many standard deviations are there really on? this normal model down. There's negative 3. So if I'm going down to negative 99, that's like at the ninth grade center or something, you know. That's, 
that's pretty much infinity for all we're talking about. Okay, so we're going to simulate negative infinity. Now, I think on the normal, I mean, on the inspires, it actually has infinity. And so that's weird because I'm like, how do they quantify that? Because that's like not a number. So anyway, interesting. But uh, so we're going to go to negative 99 as our lower limit. And we're going to go up to 1.5. We are going to always do this in terms of standardized scores. There's the easy cheaty way where you can change this mean and standard deviation. We're not doing that because the AP test requires us to always write out our what our z-score uh, or our statistics and our data are. So we're going to always use zero and one here so that we always do z-scores by hand. Um, that's that's a requirement. So always leave that zero and one. And so now you can go on down to paste and get your answer. The rest of us who have the old operating system, we've got it looking like this. So I'll show you that. It is it is 1.5 just because that's what our Z score was on that we are talking about for the husband. I said go to 1.5 because that was for the husband. Um, yeah on our particular problem. It's not always going to be 1.5. It's like whatever the problem is wanting you to go to. Okay. So that was a good question. So for those of us who have this old operating system, we go like this, negative 99. Then above the seven is a comma. And then we're, our husband was located at 1.5 standard deviations up. Close the parentheses and then you can hit enter. See, that's a lot less work than going through the menu. But anyway, there you go. So this is 0 0.9331. What does that mean? That's a percentage. What percentage is that? 93.32%. That says that 93.32% of the department, the husband's department, has salary below him. So he's in the 93rd percentile. So whether you write the answer as 0.9332 or 93.32%, it does not matter as long as you write them one of those two ways, it's fine. Um, I kind of, AP, you should, ha you should be able to go in between those two things seamlessly. Um, I kind of choose them differently based on the context of the problem. I honestly think this makes more sense because that's more real world. I understand 93.32%, okay? So either way, it's fine. Okay, so that takes us through how you find that area below what the husband is wondering. Okay, the next question, by the way, let's actually go ahead and just for practice sake, compute what proportion of the wife's department is below her. So just for practice sake, compute what proportion of the wife's department is below her. She was located where? at 1.25. So see what proportion is below her. And when you computed that, what you get? Okay, good. 89.44%. So do you see how, who is higher up in his or her respective departments? See, the husband is because he's above 93% of his peers. She's above 89% of her peers. Okay. All right. But the next slide that you have in your notes asks um, about the next slide asks about what percent of employees earn better than the wife. So in that case, we're actually wanting not the area below, but the area what? Above. So let's go down on our little map here to how to do the upper area. And so here's a little visual that we're going to go from her Z score of one. We're going to do the little example of her Z score to 1.25 up to positive infinity. And we're going to compute that area up there. So how do you think that goes into the calculator? What is the lower bound when I'm wanting the upper section? 
the z-score that we are starting at is the lower bound and then the upper bound is what positive infinity which we simulate as 99 in our calculator positive 99 so go ahead and compute that in your calculator norm cdf from her 1.25 out to positive infinity and let's see what you come up with there did you get 10.56 percent does that make sense that you got 10.56 could you have figured that out without even doing this since you had done that yes because what can you say about those two numbers together they add up to one see so if I just keep in mind you know I'm trying to just get you uh, understanding the whole anatomy of the normal model if you knew that area below then you can do one minus and it gives you the area above okay so there you go there's your two options so let's suppose we want to do something where we go in between so this isn't really going to be exactly correct thought process but let's just say I want to go between a z-score of 1.25 up to a z-score of 1.5 and so I want in between two z scores so this is the last kind of thing that we have here so suppose i want to go between a z score of 1.25 and a z score of 1.5 how does that work with our middle area we go from the low z score to the high z score and that's how you go in between two z scores Imagine that. Okay, so go ahead and compute that in your calculator. Let's see what proportion of data, what's the probability you land in between those two Z scores? And I think it ends up being like 3.88%, 0.0388. Okay, so you now know how to compute that proportion or that probability or that area below a certain point above a certain point and in between two points that's our first main goal and actually I mean actually, that's really the main goal for today is to figure that out um, so let's take a look at how that applies to our homework because I'm kind of changing that up for now since we had had our pep rally, I ended up kind of shortening this and like <clears throat> this drawing, this pictures and writing. We're going to do this Monday, but we're going to, I'm going to kind of cut this a little short for now. So we're going to draw these pictures later. So today I want you to do page 12, problems one through five and problems 12 through 14 and you do not need to draw the pictures yet so 1 through 5 are all good to go they ask you for the proportion of observations between these particular these are the Z scores okay but I want you to look down at problems 12 through 14 and consider something like number 12 find the proportion of observations between 176 and 185 I want you to think to yourself what is different about 12 13 and 14 than what we've done so far don't say it out loud think to yourself what's different about those and once again we start with the odds so the odds tell the evens what's what's different about that than what we've been doing go Yeah. Yes. Proportion, percent, probability, same. Yeah. Yep. That's why on our thinking map, that's why we had all of that. It's the same thing. Yeah. Those are all the same. Uh huh. Synonymous. Uh huh. Good. Okay. So let's see which came up with odds told the even. So the evens tell me. Who's the even over there, you guys? Okay, go, Sage. What you got? 
Ah, so there's a pre-step you're going to have to do because these problems here do not have the z-score, right? They, they start with the actual context value. These are the x's. So you're going to have to do your little x minus the mean over the standard deviation twice. So you're going to have to do that for each x and you will get your two z scores and then norm CDF between those two z scores. Okay? So um, that's the difference there on 12, 13, and 14. All right. That's as much as we're going through today. So pretty simple, straightforward, basic lesson. Just finding, and in case you missed it, the, these are all the same thing. Proportion of observation, percent of data, the probability, all of that is based on the area under the curve. And so I want you to go ahead and finish those problems, 1 through 5 and 12 through 14.